Welcome back friends. This is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing and one of the things that's been on my list to do is compare Distress Ink and Distress Oxide side by side. This is also good too because for those of you who are just learning, the packages look exactly the same. I think the prices are typically the same and in some stores they're even near each other on the same shelf or they only have one. So this is Distress Oxide. It came out later and has a little bit different properties with water. And this is Distress Ink. It came out earlier and has been said to be the superior product for blending by some. I don't know, we'll see. So I have peeled paint in both. Oh, that's the other thing. In many instances, they come in the exact same colors. There aren't as many colors in the Distress Oxides yet because they haven't been out as long, but you could have, let me grab one. For example, you could have Salty Ocean in both Distress Ink or Distress Oxide. So if you're trying to purchase a product for something specific or you saw a video and you wanna get the exact product, be sure you're paying attention to if it's Distress Ink or Distress Oxide. Okay, so I have peeled paint in both. I have brand clean daubers, mostly because I can't trust the other ones. I don't know if they are clean, so an experiment. And then I took a Memento Black ink and I stamped a few things out just so we'd have something to work on. And then I have a sprayer nearby. And like I said before, any sprayer is fine. You could use one of these little bottles, something you water your plants with, or you can get the distress sprayer, whatever, doesn't matter. You could probably just use a paintbrush and flick some water or your fingers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink up both daubers so that we have them ready to go. And I'm also gonna put a little bit, we'll go right side as always, distress oxide and left side distress ink. So you can see if you know these products and they were down, and it does say on the back too, so if you had them both and the lids were off, and they're down on the mat, the oxide is a little bit thicker, has a little bit of strange coloring to it. Oops, I forgot the daubers. Whereas the ink just looks more like traditional ink. And again, it says on the back so you can check it. Now I think the trick is, and the reason I don't typically like to start with clean daubers is they're kind of a pain to ink up. Okay, and you can ink them directly off of here too. It's just that I thought we might wanna play with that so I wasn't gonna use it. To start with, I'll just do right at the edge. Distress Oxide is thicker. It's, um, a combination of pigment and dye inks, and pigment inks are wetter and you can use them for embossing. Distress ink is more like ink, right? It's a dye based, it's thinner. So there's that one. Okay, this one gives more like a traditional ink, a soft blending, and I'll tell you, I'm not a good blender. Anybody who's watching this and is, is dying. A, I didn't put enough ink on. I wasn't patient, shocking. And B, I pressed too hard. Okay, so see how in the oxide you kind of get that oxidized, smoky look? And in the other one, you're getting a, a cleaner color. Now, don't judge them by my blending abilities. Remember in my videos, that's not fair. The other thing I wanted to see was if you put them over something, kind of how it shows through. There you go, that's better blending. I like that better. This one we need to ink up more. I need to get this fair comparison. I think it's interesting that these aren't if you showed these to me, I would say these aren't exactly the same color. The uh, Distress Oxide and Peeled Paint is a little more yellow looking. It has that oxidized, tarnished look. So again, if you were trying to match a product 
specifically or you'd started something and you went to the store and got the other one, you would probably not love it if you grabbed the other one. I am looking at how translucent they are, how nice they blend over things. So far I'm not disappointed in either. The other thing I want to do is get a brush. This is a really big stamp so what we'll probably do is we'll probably just do like one corner of it because I don't want to paint this whole star while you watch me. Now we need to try and do this without water at first because if we add water we're going to get a little more creativity than we were looking for. We'll do that in the next phase. Okay, so you can build up the ink. You can start out really soft or you can come in super dark. Oh, we need a different brush. And it just blends in layers exactly as you would expect with the blending brushes. I am really shocked at how different these colors are. I'm gonna have to get the blue and do it. Okay, now are you watching this one? This one is much more like paint. It is like, um, almost like a watered down acrylic. And because I didn't get my brushes wet, I kind of have some tweakers, but you'll see what happens when we get this wet. It would be a little weird to start that way. Usually I do, but I want you to be able to see it. Okay, so if I was going to be painting in shapes or that sort of thing, I think I would much rather have the Distress Oxide. Now, if you're somebody who likes really blended backgrounds and soft looks and sunsets, you might prefer the Distress Inks. I don't mind uh, saturated colors. Yeah, see, this one's nice to paint with, even with this Crayola brush. I know, I always talk about the Crayola products. I'm telling you, don't knock them. Walk down that kid's aisle every now and then and see what they have. Because I think a lot of the brushes in the adult section are lower quality for the same price. So if you're not gonna pay up, you might as well just get the Crayola. Or steal them from your sister, that too. Okay. So can you see that difference? The oxides, it's just, uh, a thicky, thicker, heavier product to work with. We'll use a leaf. So the other thing that people talk about a lot is stamping with them. And what I've heard, I don't know, we're experimenting together, is that um, I don't have two sets exactly the same, so we'll just clean them in between, but we'll let them dry so it's a fair comparison. We'll do peeled paint, or we'll do the Distress ink first, because I'll tell you right now, that's easier to wash off. People, I have heard people say that Distress inks are not good for stamping with, so I'm curious to see what we think of that today. I'd stamp with that. It does beat up a little, and these are, to give you an idea, this is an Altenew set. So it's probably uh, pretty high quality, uh, probably the photopolymer made in the US. Yeah, photopolymer. So it takes ink pretty well, better than a silicone stamp. Uh, I don't know how it compares to like an old school red rubber stamp, but I think that would be perfectly fine. Let's see what the second looks like. So I'm happy with both of them. The one last thing I want to show you is what happens when I spray them with water, okay? On the distress side, not a lot, okay? Now watch on the oxide side. Okay, so it's spotted. Let's get a roll of paper towels. You can't see it really well. On the distress side, it left like a watermark, you know, like a pattern from sprinkling. On the distress oxide, it actually oxidizes into a different color. And you can see that right in here. It looks aged and battered. And it'll be more so when it dries, it'll settle down. It kind of does some different things. And I'll show you over here. 
right here. If I hit this ink with water, it's really, really nice to work with, but it kind of changes it, okay? Water leaves streaks. Water has a reactive power with the oxide. It leaves almost like a white rush dish, you know, like it was at the beach overnight or something. It's oxidized. And in the distress, you got a lighter version of the same ink. I don't know that I like one necessarily better than the other, but I would keep them in mind as I did the properties. And I was very happy with the distress ink for stamping. I really was. Now that we have this big gooey mess, I'm just gonna take this. I wanted to show you on a different color too. And a different paper. So the Distress Oxide, when you add a bunch of water to it, it's like paint. I mean, it looks like watered down acrylic, whereas the ink still looks like ink. Just, just very different products, I think. And again, I was shocked at the colors. In the salty ocean, I'll probably get Distress Ink and Distress Oxide to try them both. Okay, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed talking about the differences between Distress Oxide and Distress Ink. Have a great day.